Regular viewers will remember that a few months ago, Servers Old sent me a CPC-464 that he found in the woods. Initial inspection found it to be in a pretty poor state. And I said we'd take a closer look to see what, if anything, could be done to save it. And we're going to do that right now. Mark fixes stuff. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. You can get an instant quote on a variety of services, or browse a library of talented makers' designs, add them to your cart, and have them delivered directly to your door. Rust, dust, bugs, and must. This shortboard CPC 464 has got it all. It's in a pretty much wrecked state, but I wanted to see if any kind of salvage is possible. Let's take the board out of the case. Ah, that's a fail. Corrosion 1, screwdriver nil. OK, let's try this one in the middle. Pushing into the slot really hard, I can just about get the screw to turn. Bits are flaking off though. Amazingly, rust is even present on the thread. I can't even get the screwdriver into this one. My tip can't penetrate this hole deep enough. And I've destroyed this one just by sticking it in. Like a rusty tiger's eye. These are absolutely rotten. The screws are falling apart at the merest touch of the screwdriver. Using a wire brush, we can see how far the rusting has penetrated into the screws. I've never seen it so deep. It soon becomes clear that we have absolutely no hope of unscrewing the rest of these. The one we did get out was pure luck. Sometimes you can use an oversized flat-ended screwdriver to grip and twist a rusted screw, but with these, that would all come to naught. As I scrape away here, the smell of rust and damp is quite overpowering. But fear not, for I have a ridiculous plan. It's rotary tool time. We can use this Dremel with a grinding disc to try and cut a slot in the remaining screw head. Then a big flat-headed screwdriver can get a grip and we can hopefully get it out. OK, one down. Ow, hot! Although most of these passive components are wrecked, I'm still trying to do as little damage as possible. This seems to be working so far. With the Dremel, I'm using quite a slow speed to avoid the disc snatching. A high speed snatch can lead to damaging the board and components. Mmm, crumbly. The Dremel is a very useful tool for a variety of uses. Affiliate link below. I'm amazed that the threads are rusted after being screwed into the plastic case. Last screw now, so fingers crossed. Being careful not to damage the keyboard connectors, we cut our slot. And this one comes out as well. Phew. Now we can take the board out. I dread to imagine. Ah, not too bad. The remains of a bug's feast, but nothing too repulsive. There's a tremendous amount of what I'd describe as silt inside the case. The underside of the PCB is a nasty mix of dirt and corrosion. 
and a mouldy leaf. I'm not too worried about static damage so we're just going to brush off as much of this surface dirt as possible with an old paintbrush. Whilst we clean this off let me tell you about the benefits of becoming a patron of Mark Fix's stuff. You get early access to my videos without the annoying YouTube ads. Patrons are the lifeblood of Mark Fix's stuff and are the reason I can produce content. If you're able to throw a few pennies in the pot, please visit the Patreon link in the description below. I've cleaned the board off but now I need to clean the bench off. I love a bit of suction. Who doesn't? Before we try and work this board we need to get a penetrating fluid on it to try and lift the dirt and surface corrosion. I'm going to give this an overnight bath in penetrating contact cleaner. I can't even get the heatsink off because the aluminium is corroded together. Maybe this will help. Not forgetting the underside of the board. And now it's time for night nights. Good night. Good morning. Well I've given the board a brush down and that heatsink came off so it's good news so far. The board is still pretty rank though and the rusting is awful. Let's take out the socketed chips first. I'm gently prying at them with the screwdriver tip. I can't get an IC puller into this chip and even if I could I don't like them. I find they damage things. Finally the ULA comes out. It looks pretty good. This is the silicon sole of the machine so I'm hoping at the very least we can use this in a Phoenix build. The same cannot be said for the socket. Yuck. Next we can pop out the Zilog Z80 CPU. It comes out with a struggle and inside the socket is filthy. The corrosion was gripping the pins in the socket but it came out eventually. These resistors look top condition. There's a resistor network here that looks like it's been on the bottom of a lake. How will we get that out? It'll be interesting to test these chips later. I don't have much hope for this crystal working though. Although these sockets look okay-ish they're really oxidised inside. Time to grab my desoldering gun and see if we can take anything off of the board. This socket has the cleanest looking solder joint so let's have a go. It's a bit resistive to coming out and has a rusted solder pad stuck to the leg. It doesn't bode well for the board but we won't give up just yet. Cripes, I can't even make the pads out. Next we try the AV socket. Some of the pins are easy but the larger pins on the ground plane refuse to clear. You can see this area of the board has a lot of corrosion and what looks like lime scale build up. Trying fresh solder fails because it simply will not stick. This will never work because the surface isn't clean enough. Even encapsulating the whole joint in molten solder fails.
We can try some liquid flux, but I suspect that won't work either. In these situations, we need to remove a small portion of the surface contaminant. By cutting through a patch of the surface oxide, we can get some fresh solder onto the joint that can transfer heat underneath the crud. We just need one blob of solder to stick onto the dirty pin and then the desolder gun will be able to do its work. Let's go for it. It's not the easiest or the nicest job, but it does work this way. Hooray! Look at my dirty socket. This power barrel jack has had a bodge repair in the past. The socket has obviously come off and taken the pads with it. This wire is holding the socket in place. Using the same technique, we can try and take this part out of the board as well. First a quick clean of IPA, then filing a couple of patches for our solder to stick to and transfer heat into the joint. And another quick clean. And a bit of lovely flux for luck. The copper wire takes the solder really quickly and the external contaminant starts to flake off. I just want to say that you're all really lucky that you can't smell this. Because of the lime scale contaminant, I wonder if this was the lowest part of the board as it was sat in the woods for almost a decade. Perhaps it all ran past this point. With the blobs on the joints, the desolder gun makes short work of the rest of the job. The slotted holes are cleaning rather well, but I can notice there's some other shenanigans going on underneath the joints. Looking at the board substrate, it's possible bad news for later. Below the surface, the material is a mushy mess. The socket still needed some persuasion to come free of the board, but nothing too bad. As we can see, the pads are completely lifted, and the circuit board material is flaking away like sand. This pad was underneath the repair and free of the substrate. This is a really dirty socket. I've also desoldered one of the keyboard sockets. This came away easily without pad damage. Look at that grunge. Let's have a go at the jack socket. Flux alone won't cut it here. Cleaning up with the file to make a contact point definitely work better again. The two rear holes empty easily. Using the file on the middle leg should help here, but let's clean up with a cotton bud and add some flux first. Even after that, the socket won't come out. 
Wiggling the socket shows that this leg is mostly free. This really is a very time consuming task. A bit more flux. And then it starts to look more promising as the solder takes much better. The desoldering gun gets a decent pull on the pin. And success! The board doesn't look too bad here. Despite the dreadful filth. The value bands of these resistors are mostly gone, like tears in the rain. Another quick scrub down with IPA and the next victim comes out of the brittle board. The tube looks OK, but it's hard to judge the tracks of the board without a microscope. This resistor network just fell apart into flakes of rust. Under the scope we can see some of the tracks are just peeling from the board. I've marked the chips for easy identification later. IC106 comes out and reveals a pile of dirt and sand underneath. I'm starting to question if this board can be saved now. I've started to use some more aggressive but faster methods of chip removal. The fiberglass pencil cleans the oxide more quickly but strips some of the board lacquer. Work carefully with these. The dust they leave behind is very sharp and dangerous for your fingers and eyes. This socket fought me all the way. The pins were rusted into the board. Two of the traces from IC114 to IC115 have really lifted. The wires have pretty much vanished. I've made notes of where they are. Well, everything silicon is now out of this board, leaving behind some very rusted passive components. Where traces have lifted, I've held them down safely with polyamide tape. You know, in case I lose my mind and try to clean, dry and repair this board at a later date. My worry isn't repairing the broken tracks. That's actually easy. It's whether or not there are other hidden problems particularly with that mushy part of the board. Then there's the oxide on the board and the passive components. I know these resistors will put up a fight during removal and try to take the vias with them. This single leg took almost 10 minutes to clear. Terry and Dave, the gummy crew, have an idea. They said that we should get one of the new replica CPC boards and transplant the digital soul of this abandoned 464 into that. But what do you think? Let me know below. A big thanks to my amazing patrons for making this video happen. They are awesome. And here they are. Thanks for watching my video. Please watch some more. Here they are on the screen. Bye.